and the story uh, is called Crackhead. At 3 a.m., after the melatonin fails to work in the chamomile tea, after the drops of valerian under the tongue, the sleepies, after the attempt to just lie there and think of all the things you're grateful for, go ahead. I'm grateful for my loved one, the spent, the dogs, the dinner, damn that son of a bitch at work, how could I let him get away with that? Oh, you've slipped. <laughs> start, start over again. I'm grateful for the sun that shines, the dew that clings, the dark, dark rings under my eyes. Try counting. That's what people say. Count backwards from 100 in sets of 5. No, that's too easy. Try sets of 7. 193 minus 7 equals 86. Bottles of beer on the wall, 86 bottles of beer. Forget it. <laughs> Counting never works. You ask a friend how she puts herself to sleep, and she says that every night when she climbs beneath the covers, she says out loud, I will be asleep shortly. <laughs> then pictures herself dropping down through a white cloud, her body slipping through like a letter through a mail slot. Damn it, you forgot to mail the electric bill. Call the <laughs> Lock the door, get up now and write it down. The one idea you had a minute ago to save your bacon or save your life, write it down, you'll forget by morning. Try to put it all out of your mind. Just go ahead and try. Turn on the light, look at the clock, take a sip of water, return to the question you ask every night. What put you to sleep when you were a child? You come from a cheaper by the half dozen family, six children, three boys, three girls. Each set has a bedroom, the boys' room painted blue, the girls painted pink, to remind you, in case you forget, of temperaments ascribed at birth. The colors carry over to your clothes, your bikes, your toys, everything you own. In delivery rooms, there are huge vats of these colors, and as soon as you are identified by one glance at your tiny privates, you are dunked and after that marked for life. Every night, it's the same routine. At bedtime, at the time to hit the hay hour, called out once, twice, then by the time I count to three, and finally, now this is it, you and the girls slowly shuffle off towards your bedroom, glowing in its canopy pinkness, dragging your Barbies and Ginnies and Betsy Wetsies while the boys box and tackle and rumble down the hall and disappear into their blue boy down. That's when you hear it start up, low at first by the thrum of a turned up bass on a chopped up El Dorado, then louder, the sounds of one boy body slamming against the bedroom door, another crashing into the blue wall. You hear them all the way down the hall in your pink room, for they are supposed to make noise. This is what they were born to do, so that later in the life, they can claim the earth and all of its minions. <laughs> <laughs> Once upon a time, the boys slept in bunk beds, stacked one on top of the other, and below the bottom bunk, a trundle bed that rolled out. The whole contraption was like a triple-decker bus, and there was always the fight over who got to drive, who got to take the wheel, who got to gun the motor, and race the bus around the dreams of dreamland. One night, all three climbed up to the top bunk, and all together now, trampoline and swan dive and jackknife from that great height, and on one such jump, the highest one, all the slats broke on the top bunk bed, which came crashing down on the bunk below, and oh, oh, domino, the lower bunk fell on the trundle, a triple-decker pan. After the scolding and the sniffling, after the we didn't mean to and the switch brought out and you're in Dutch now, your father carted the broken bunk frames outside and laid the three remaining mattresses on the boys' bedroom floor, which took up the entire floor. Now when you walk into the room, you step onto a sea of mattresses and your mother says, what she needs is a room like this, with mattresses up the sides of the wall and on the ceiling. What she needs is a padded room. <laughs> In the morning, after a night spent in their springy, springy blue world, the boys bound out of the bedroom into the hall, bounce through the house and into the street, and later, years later, they will become hippies and have dope dens and will sleep with women with super long hair who feel it is radical and against convention to have mattresses on the floor, and everyone <laughs> will feel very, very free. <laughs> Meanwhile, down the hall, you girls in your pink bubble jump too, but do not destroy, which will limit you in later life, which will <laughs> cause some to question your gumption. Your bouncing and diving and jumping stop short, and while the beds groan and threaten to give, while the slats on the beds bend to their point of breaking, and your mother says, 
I'm getting to the point of breaking the beds and your mother stayed in town. There's not enough money for three single girl beds, and three single girl beds would look too much like a hospital ward during wartime, <laughs> causing your parents to think of nurses in white uniforms tending to soldiers with their broken limbs. And while nursing is an acceptable career option for girls, let's not start thinking about careers just yet. <laughs> Instead, your parents shoved two single girl beds together to form one large bed for all, and once the pink chenille bedspread is on, with pink swirly flowers the color of Pepto-Bismol, no one will know the difference. But a threesome is always trouble. A threesome <laughs> always bites. Think about the car. Think about the back seat. Think about the race to the car to claim a window. And the one who is always late or be beaten back, who has to climb over others and get the hump. That's you. Mm -hmm. Always you. Having to sit with your legs crammed up with your knees in your face and on either side of you, not the soft breeze of an open window, but your sisters who are touching you with the <laughs> sides of their sticky legs. Mom, they are touching me. <laughs> they lift their noses up to the windows like little dogs and breathe in the fresh air streaming by and you are caught in the middle with used air. <laughs> air that has already been breathed in and breathed out by them, not like the air that comes across the ocean straight from Japan without one soul having breathed it, except for maybe a gull or two. <laughs> As goes the car, so goes the bed. At night, you're always left to ride the hump, or in this case, it's opposite, the dip between the two beds. You're always stuck in the middle, split in two, so that half of you lays on one bed and half on the other. Your body positioned straight down the middle, which in later life will be the reason for your indecision, and also the reason you're able to see both sides of any argument to be neutral like Switzerland. <laughs> Go to bed now, your mother yells from the living room, I'm starting to count. One, two. You get under cover and lay face down in between the bodies of your sister, one twisting the blankets one way and one twisting them the other, so that the blanket is like a tarp pulled tight, pressing down across your back. You're trapped. One of your sisters yells, Mom. She's breathing. <laughs> and there you are with nowhere to turn your head, so you put your face down the crack between the beds, your nose down deep in the crack. What is there left to do but breathe in? So you breathe in and try to put them out of your mind. You breathe in. Up through the crack between the beds, up through that great divide. Up through the half inch of space between the two continents comes a thin, cool stream of air, cool like the green air down by the creek that shims over the water surface over the wet stones, cool like the finger of fog that slips under the window frame and enters your room and turns your breath blue. Breathe in. This air current is something you can ride on, float on. It's yours and yours alone. You could ride it anywhere, to Greenland, Antarctica, the crack is where the air comes in, and on the breeze that comes through any small crack, the crack in a cup, the crack in the sidewalk, the car window, through the millions of cracks that cover the earth, you can breathe in the cool air that comes up from the world below, below your thoughts, below the fights, the rumbling, below the pinkness in the blue. Here it is, like a small scene in the night, slip through, fall through, Drop down through the soft black cloud. Go ahead now. Breathe in. You'll be asleep shortly.